Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. Glad that you've joined us today. In a few moments, I want to talk to you about more of the reasons why we should study Bible prophecy. Over the past week, we've been able to give you a little bit of the information you need to know concerning why Christians don't study Bible prophecy, but I want to give you some reasons uh, in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to just remind you of an upcoming event in September. Mark the calendar for Bible Prophecy Conference right here, the Bible Prophecy Files Conference right here at Pace Assembly. We'd love to be able to have you join us. We'll be releasing the information to those who are on the schedule to be speakers uh, in the next uh, days, and so we want you to be looking for that. But mark your calendar in September. You'll not want to miss it. Now, with all that is taking place around our world, obviously you see it from day to day, and if you uh, track with us here at Prophecy Files Briefing, you understand that every week we give you articles and information that's happening that's pointing toward the return of Jesus Christ. There is no doubt about it. You'd have to have your head in the sand or completely ignorant uh, to be able to not see what is taking place. With our wars and rumors of wars all around, the moral decline that's taking place in recent days, you've seen it, the UN now, along with the United States, has now voted for a ceasefire uh, to be proposed upon the nation of Israel, as if all of that, the enemy is all gone, and now everything's okay. And in that information, you see the Palestinian Authority that literally says, we want to wipe Israel off the map uh, to be able to take back over that area and call for a two-state solution. That alone, my dear friends, is enough for you to study Bible prophecy. And in recent days, we talked to you about the reasons why that many people don't, but here's some things and reasons why you should. First, a major portion of the Bible uh, actually consists of prophecy. As I've told you before, there's over 500 prophecies in the Old Testament that point to the second coming of Jesus Christ, and one in approximately 25 verses uh, in the New Testament point toward the return, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So to take prophecy out of the Bible would be to gut uh, the major portions of the Bible. And of course, you could not understand why uh, that certain passages would go with other certain passages if you took Bible prophecy and the prophetic word uh, for future events out of the Bible. Of course, the book of Revelation would be completely uh, expunged from the Bible if you took Bible prophecy out, along with the book of Daniel and others. So uh, a major portion of the Bible consists of prophecy, and that's one reason why you should study Bible prophecy. Here's another one. If prophetic sections are neglected, we can't have a clear understanding of Scripture. We understand the Bible tells us that the Bible interprets the Bible, a line upon line, precept upon precept. And so when you're reading the book of Revelation, for example, concerning uh, the events that are coming in the future, you get more of an understanding from the Old Testament book of Daniel. It's very important that you understand that the two are not only tied together, but there is, for instance, in the book of Daniel, profiles, characteristics of the coming Antichrist that is found in the book of Daniel. And this is an important fact that Daniel says, and uh, John the Revelator, the writer of the book of Revelation says, in Daniel, God commands Daniel to seal up the book until the time of the end when it will then be revealed. He commands John in the book of Revelation to open the book un, uh, to be able to reveal what is taking place. That's the very title of the book, the Revelation. Why is that so important? Because we're seeing the things that Daniel spoke about that are coming to pass uh, right now and will into our future that John gives even much more uh, insight to uh, and the two of these books really go hand in hand. So that's another reason that we should not neglect the study of Bible prophecy. Here's another one. Reasons why we should study Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy reveals Jesus Christ. According to the book of Luke 24 and 25, it is Jesus who is to be revealed in Bible prophecy. As we told you, Revelation 19.10, that the testimony of uh, Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And then it says in the very first chapter of the book of Revelation, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is not just uh, reading the newspaper or having some kind of uh, insight into things that are coming. All of these things point toward the one true God who is none other than Jesus Christ. This is important for you to get a hold of because the Bible is not a Bible that points toward any other religion or person or personality. 
It all points toward Jesus Christ. And all of that, my friends, is being revealed line upon line when we study Bible prophecy. Here's one more before we leave you today. Certain prophecies in the Bible have then already been fulfilled in the first coming of Jesus Christ. Now, why is that so important? Well, if God, and he is 100% accurate, and this is very important for all of you that are followers of Nostradamus, and you want to say that his prophecies are somehow aligned to foretell the future, you need to understand that based upon the understanding of history and his life, he took these prophecies from the Bible. And not to mention the fact when he mixes it together with his own words, they are no longer 100% accurate. That's why it's so important that you study the Bible, because the Bible is 100% accurate in all things, and especially, of course, in Bible prophecy. How can you know that, Pastor? Because the uh, first coming prophecies of Jesus Christ are 100% accurate in total detail. For instance, Isaiah 40 and 3 tells us that John would be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 6 or 7 and 14 tells us that he would be born of a virgin. How would you like that calculated into the algorithms and the AIs of today? There's no way they could come out with that. Only Jesus Christ fulfilled that prophecy. Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that he would return, or that he would come and be born in Bethlehem. Of all the places that you could have selected, why not Jerusalem? Why not Babylon? Why not some other location? Because the prophecy from the book of Micah tells us that he would be born in Bethlehem. Furthermore, right there in that same chapter of Micah, he tells us prophetically that he would be born, Jesus would be born in his first coming in the town of Bethlehem, in the tower of the flock. Well, what is that? That's not a stable as we would know it today. It was a cave that was used to raise lambs for the slaughter of the sacrifices made in the temple in Jerusalem, just a few miles away from Bethlehem. It was there that the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, would be born in this specific location in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Here's a few more. Psalm 72, verses 10 and 15, that wise men would come and visit him. Accurate, 100%. And it goes on and on from Isaiah chapter 53 to Zechariah 11 and 12 and 13, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, Psalm 16, and on and on the list could go to tell you that Bible prophecy is 100% accurate because he fulfilled everything in the first coming. You can trust God for his second coming. We're going to take up more of these uh, subjects concerning the reasons why we should study Bible prophecy in the next few Prophecy Files broadcasts. So we want you to make sure you're right here for this briefing. Till the next time we get together around God's Word, remember, Jesus Christ is coming soon. 